the subject titled when you say here am I from on Friday that's the topic when you say here am I and the context we're looking at was the context of the caller the messenger and the what and the message amen, amen. so those of you who are not here the Lord help us to help you Lord, with the spirit of the message in Jesus name Amen. so when you say here am I that's the topic so today we are seeing the part 3 of it on Friday we saw part 1 and yesterday we saw part 2 today we are going to be seeing the part 3 of the topic when you say here am I it has to do with the topic has to do with you understanding the, the weight of answering yes to the call of God. And I told you that God has called every one of us. Every one of us. There is nobody that is not called. And I also explained further to you that the call of God is not tied to the pulpit alone. So whenever we say you have calling, the first thing that comes to the mind of men is pulpit ministry. God is calling me to be a pastor. No. God has not called pastors alone. The call of God is diverse because we are dealing with kingdom. I told you that God is a king and he has a kingdom. And in a kingdom, you have various and diverse arms. And for example, in the world, we have um, seven mountains. The mountain of politics, the mountain of of of, uh, of civil service, the mountain of religion, the mountain of education, the mountain of business, the mountain of uh, arts and entertainment. We have about seven mountains of the world. So, some of us seated here, we are in the mountain of business. Some can be in the mountain of entrepreneurship. Some can be the mountain of education, education. There are people who God will call from among the, uh, the people, the members of the body of Christ, whom their assignment is to conquer the mountain of education. How? He will give them a vision of running a school. That vision will be wrapped in a name. And that name of the school will, will run from primary to secondary and even to tertiary level. And God is going to give the man the blueprint of that school. What the school is to do. Because actually you must know that just as God is doing that, Satan also has raised people who are finding out, who are, um, they are founders of schools and they have demonic assignments to initiate children for Satan. That's it. Are you with me? So God will also raise men who will also represent the values of the kingdom in the education arm. And that is what he will judge that man with on the day of judgment. The ministry of that man is that school. Not just that the school is progressing, having money students are being admitted. That's not just their goal. For example, in this church we have the vision, the mission, the vision statement. And that's what everything that we do, everything that I do, everything that Salem does, revolves around that. Because that's what God requests of me about when I stand before him. Now, when he gives a school, that's what he will give the man the reason why he's asking him to start the school. Not this one that people start school because school business will be done. Why are you going to this this area of life? This area of life will need done. If you are still operating like that, you are operating from the realm of the flesh. You are operating from the realm of personal ambition. Every one of us is called. The difference between you and the person sitting next to you is that the person sitting next to you have discovered the area of his core 
while you, you are still ignorant. And when I talk about call, I'm talking about purpose. I'm talking about purpose. Have, have you discovered your purpose? There are people that God has called to the world of entertainment and arts. When we talk about arts, we're talking about music. So when you say here am I to the call of God, there are certain implications and there are about 17 of them and we have seen about 11 of those implications. From Friday, the first thing we saw is that when you say here am I, you have said what? Yes, to a what? A journey of what? No return. Number two, we said when you say here am I, you have said what? Yes, to what? Surrendering your personal ambition. I told you that personal ambition and uh, the call of God does not go. They don't go together. God told Moses to take off his shoes. Number three, we say when you say Jeremiah, you have said yes to the losing of your what? Coat of many colors. Number four, we said when you say, I can't be explaining it again. Those of you who are not here. That's what you missed. You have said yes to seasons of wandering in the field. Number five, we said when you say Jeremiah, you have said yes to what? Mockery. Number six, when you say here am I, you have said yes to what? A life of continuous learning. Number seven, when you say here am I, you have said yes to a life of what? Faith. Are you people there? Yes. Number eight, when you say here am I, you have said yes to what? A kingdom mentality. I am only hearing a few voices. Those of you who are right in that day, what? Are you here? Okay, let me see if you are here. Number nine. When you say here am I, you have said what? Okay, you are with me. Number 10. When you say here am I, you have said yes to the caring for both the sheep and the what? The goats. Number 11. Where, where we stopped yesterday. You have said here am I. When you say here am I, you have said what? Yes. To obey difficult instructions. You know, our text. Jacob called Joseph. And Joseph answered, here am I. And that answer he gave changed the course of his life. His answer that call, his father sent him on the assignment, he never returned back because he said, here am I. Here am I. So let's go to number 12 today. When you say, here am I, you have said yes to rewards for faithfulness in service. You have said yes to rewards for faithfulness in service. Genesis 31, verse 11 to 12. So, uh, Genesis 31, verse 11 to 12. When you say, here am I, remember I told you that that there is mockery. I've talked about mockery. I've talked about uh, a lot of things. Now we are beginning to enter the other part of here am I. When you say here am I, you have actually said yes to rewards for faithfulness in service. Now, Genesis 31 verse 11, and the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said what? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. I said what? Yeah. So now he said here am I. Let's see what followed after he said here am I. Verse 12. And he said, lift up now thy eyes. And see, all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled, grizzled. For I have seen all that labor dwelt unto thee. Verse 13. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me. You know, God is a covenant keeping word. See God after 21 years remembered that thing. He said, I'm the God that appeared to you in better. We are now vow is a vow, and vow is very important to God. When you make a vow before the Lord, He has no, He doesn't forget. He doesn't forget. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy what? Kindred. Amen. So you can see that here, yeah, Jacob had run to Laban, his uncle, and he had served Laban for about 
21 years because he served seven years for the first four for Rachel. He was not deceived and given Leah instead of Rachel. And then he served another seven years for Leah. That's how many? 14 years. Just to marry the two daughters of the man. That was the dowry he paid. Then he served another seven years. So at the end of it, God had to appear to him. Because this guy had faithfully served who? Laban, his uncle. He had faithfully served Laban. But Laban had cheated him ten times. If you read the place where um, Laban pursued after Jacob and caught up with Jacob, when Jacob was responding to Laban in anger, he said, you have cheated me this ten times. Ten times. And the first cheat that Laban cheated him was what? Eh? Seven years. I agree with you. That I will serve you seven years. I don't have money to pay dowry. But let me serve as the dowry. And you agree that you will give me wretched, the one I love. But after I served, you gave me who? Yeah. yeah. That's the first cheating. So the scripture did not reveal other cheating. But he said he had cheated him ten times. But towards the end of his stay, God had to give him insight, gave him wisdom. And when he applied that wisdom, he discovered that the, the flock that he was keeping for labor, you know, he agreed with Laban. He had to do an agreement with Laban and said, any of the flock that is speckled, that is grizzled, all those ones that has spotted will be mine. But anyone that is pure white will be what? Yours. So what they did was that they separated all the speckled and they were spotted and transferred them to another person. So from now henceforth, any of the flock that gives birth and is speckled, it will be mine. If it is plain, it will be yours. So the reason they removed the ones that were already speckled so that uh, it will not be that he will say this one. Well, when they made the agreement, these ones were already speckled. So they, they, he can't claim ownership of them. And what happened was that as the animals kept putting to bed, they, they were giving birth to more of the speckled, bottled ones that belonged to him. By so doing, before Jacob left, his cattle, his sheep had multiplied. Remember when he met his brother Esau, when he was going to meet his brother? The Bible said he had droves of cattle. Droves of... So God rewarded him for faithfulness in service. Even though the man that he served cheated him ten times. And the reason was because he said what? Here... So when God called Jacob and he answered Yeramah, he didn't know that there was reward waiting for him. Amen? Amen. The lesson here is that when you say Yeramah, and the Yeramah you have said unto God positions you in a place where you are being cheated. Positions you in a place where you are not properly cared for. Position you in a place where your input is not appreciated. Don't leave that place because of those reasons. Are you with me? Look at me now. Don't leave the, that place because of those words. Why? Why shouldn't you leave the place? Eh? Because God will reward your word. Faithfulness in what? Service. He will reward your faithfulness. He will reward your faithfulness. There are many people who have missed God because the place where God sent them to, they were not appreciated. You know, I've talked to you before. A statement, there's a popular statement like, um, go to where you are celebrated, don't go to where you are tolerated. That is not a total truth. And that's not a kingdom truth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's the world. That's how the world thinks. 
Remember, those of you who were here yesterday, we talked about the kingdom what? Mentality. When you say yeah, man, you must cease to think like the world. You must begin to think like the kingdom. Like it. the Bible said, Paul reasoned with them out of scriptures. And when you come and meet Paul and say, I am more forget Bible. Now let's talk read things. He said, There is no reality outside scripture for me. You know, there are people like that. When you say something, you say the Bible said, you they say you they say that you say the, the Bible said. The third thing they say, now, say, you say the Bible said, they say, more read Bible, now more talk. What? There's no other reality outside scripture. Okay, what do you want me to say? Let me agree with you. And detriment to scripture and to my soul. So, for example, you say, my, my, my woman, they do me this thing. In fact, eh, this is what I'm planning to do. I say, brother, please, the Bible said we should forget Bible. That's the response we hear. So just like that statement says, go to where you're celebrated. My dear, if Jacob had run away when he was not celebrated, he would have not returned back with droves of... In fact, his wandering would have continued. Remember, he ran away from his father's house because of his brother. He ran to his uncle's place. And now, because his uncle was cheating him, if he had run again, where would he run to? He will continue to run. So what did he do? He decided to face the cheating. Ten times. And ten is the number of complete completeness. I hope you know. Nine is fruitfulness. Ten is completion. Seven is perfection. Three is trinity. One is God. Five is grace. Six is the number of man. Praise God. So, when he completed 10, even God said, you have, are you hearing me? God said, your monka is a crook, but I'm going to show that I am God. See this thing, apply this thing, you will overshadow and assign him. And he applied it, the man that was a crook was assigned and asmarted. And the Bible said, Laban, the face of Laban was no longer as it was to him like before. Laban and his sons now hated Jacob. Not because there was any quarrel, but because all the trap that they and all the gimmicks that they used in cheating him before was no longer working. And the guy, despite their plots and gimmicks, was getting what? Bigger. My dear, don't go to where you're celebrated. Don't go to where you are tolerated. Go to where you are sent and stay there. If you say here are a man, there definitely there is going to be reward. Even though the man is not willing to reward you, God will bypass that man and reward you. If you hear, sir, here. Number what now? Number 13. When you say here am I, you have said yes to becoming a channel of blessing. I told you yesterday that this program is a teaching program. So I'm going to teach. I love to teach. Because Jesus taught. Miracles are not the readings, they are my products. But teaching and discipleship is the reading. You have said yes to becoming a what? A channel of what? Genesis 39, verse 2 to 6. Genesis 39, 2 to 6. Genesis 39, 2 to 6. Later we'll go to Mark 10, 45. Genesis 10, 27. So let's do Genesis 39, 2 to 6 first. Amen? You people are not with me. I said amen. amen. Who is the main character of our subject matter? What's his name? Eh? Talk out now. What is his name? Joseph. Joseph was the one that said, Here am I. And he never returned back because of that call. He answered. Right? Remember what I am saying. I said, When you say, Here am I. You have said yes to becoming a channel of blessing. 
Hey, listen, answering the call of God and what in no matter the area God is calling you into, answering the call of God has positioned you to be a channel of blessing. Whether you like it or not, the day you said yes to God, you said yes to becoming a channel of blessing. This is the word of men. This is the word of what? Men. God does not live on this earth. It is men that lives on this earth. But the blessing flows from him. So how does God pass the blessing from heaven to men, to earth? He passes it through men to men. The blessings of God flows from men to men. Are we together? Yes, sir. In so much that if you are crying to God for something, God will not come down to answer you. God will direct you to a man. You are not with me. So if Jesus is crying for healing, so oh God, heal me. Oh God, heal me. God knows that he has deposited the healing grace in certain persons. For example, he has given healing grace to, to victory. He will send Chisa to who? Victory. Okay. Look up. When Saul was on the way to Damascus, there shone a light from heaven and he did what? He fell to the ground. You remember the story now? Yes. Saul that later became poor when he was going to persecute the Christians. He had an encounter and he said, The Lord Jesus spoke to him and said, So, so, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. He said, You cannot kick against the bricks. And then Saul so now asked, He said, What will you have me do? And the last thing the Lord said, Go into the city, it shall be told thee. God did not tell him what, what, what he needed to hear. Because what Saul was actually asking is that Jesus should preach to him. Jesus said, I committed a preaching to men. So if you want to hear the gospel, go and meet your fellow men. Go into the city, it shall be told thee. And what did happen? Jesus now went and appeared to who? Ananias. And said to Ananias, Ananias, go to the city. In the street called Street, there is a man called Saul. Who has been praying and fasting for three days? And, and I said, Lord, that man is a king that we have heard of him. And the Lord said, Go, for I have chosen him to be a vessel. So Ananias went to Saul. And you remember Saul was blind because of the light. He now went and said, Saul, the Lord Jesus Christ, make it the whole. The Bible says the scales in his eye fell. And he was filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues. That was what Saul desired when he encountered Jesus. Jesus had to direct him to a man. When you hear people make statements like, Nobody, who is your father in the Lord? I don't have father, I'm especially ministers. So, who is your father in the Lord? Who I, God. God is my father in the Lord. Who is your mentor? Holy Spirit. Who is your teacher? Jesus. Just know that you are talking to somebody with the spirit of pride. In fact, he is carrying what is called the Luciferian spirit. What did I call the spirit? He's carrying the Luciferian spirit. The Luciferian spirit is the spirit of rebellion. Because God must pass through men to men. Praise God. So when you say here am I, you have said yes to becoming a channel. A channel means God will be sending people around your life in order for them to contact what he has deposited in you. You no longer live a solitary life. You know that's Almost of most of us, yeah, especially, especially when you are an introvert, you will like a solitary life. You know what is a solitary life? I like to be alone. I don't like, listen, in my house, 
my house is my house. You know, I don't my my solitary life. Eh? That will continue as long as you have not said here am I. The moment you say here am I, you will just open, you said God, make me a channel of blessing. How many of you were here yesterday when we acted the drama with Pastor David? You were here yesterday. You remember the drama? He was praying and saying, Oh God, he blessed me. Take my story. Take my level. And he promised God and said, If you change my story, if you change my level, I will build church for you. I will help the needy. I will sponsor crusades. I will build your kingdom. And in the drama as we acted, seven years later, God answered that prayer. And he was in church. And the pastor was preaching and said, We need a land. There's a land project. And we need about 8 million. Well, how was he doing his face? He was using his face. God told me that there is somebody here that he has put that thing in your heart. That's the reason why he blessed you. He was doing like this. The pastor called, 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 and got tired and closed service. While he was going after service, another sister ran to him and said, Please, sir, please, I, I just lost my job last month and my rent is due for this. And my landlord gave me people and said, Sir, can you support me with my rent? What did he tell her? He told her, he said, His own also has expired. <laughs> said, Sorry, sister, my own has just expired. The sister said, Please, I know you can help me. He says, to the sister, please, we are all looking up to God, so look to God too. It was a very funny drama yesterday. And while he was still going, his longtime friend, Pastor Justin, who had not seen him for a while, now ran to him and said, Ah, Alpha, what's up? What did they happen that? He said, He now told him, his friend told him that, oh, well, there is a contract now from NDDC. There's a contract worth 50 million naira. And we need to cash out. If you can bring um, uh, 30 million and this is going to finalize everything and see what your, your profit will be. He said, you mean this in his legit? He said, it's legit. He said, give me your account number. I will forward it tomorrow. So he had 20, 30 million to forward because it's an investment that will profit him. But he forgot the covenant he caught with God seven years ago. I said there are many of us like that. When it has to do with something that we increase and appreciate our lives and business, we are involved. But when it has to do with the kingdom, we, we set ourselves. We do it only when, you know, I was talking about difficult instructions. When God will give, when I God told Joe, uh, Abraham, give your son, your only son, whom you love. And I told you that God will never give you an instruction that is easy. If it's easy, it's not God. Like I said, God will not, you have 10 cars. God will not say, sacrifice one car to me. That's not a sacrifice. You now bring that one car out of your 10 cars and now say, uh, you are, like I said yesterday, you will now give up that one that you bought in 2007 that the engine is giving problem. He said, Pastor, this is a sacrifice for the ministry. <laughs> and when the pastor will inherit it, you know, there was a move in those days that Mr. Ibu went to sow to the church a generator. <laughs> and that generator, some of you might have watched his own movie. The generator is the, that past my neighbor. When you own it like this, it will begin to do like this. <laughs> he went to drop it. As, as they did tell him, he carried it and dropped. Church was happy that they have seen them. <laughs> when they own the generator, they came outside. Where they on the jail, it was no longer there. It was moving. <laughs> they called Mr. Ibu. Please come and carry the jail. We don't need it again. <laughs> there are people that they are giving is at their convenience. If it is always at your convenience, you are not ready for God. Because Abraham waited 25 years for that child. And that child came. God asked him to give him the child as a test. Hear me? And I said something. I said, David prayed for a realm of wealth. And now God is demanding for that wealth back. He is not agreeing to give. Anything 
that takes the place of God in your life has become your Lord. Tisa, stand up. Let me show you something. Am I teaching good here? I'm teaching. Follow me. I saw one of my old videos. I realized that I am now more of a teacher. Those days I would be fast, 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 fast. Now I settle down to teach. You see this iPad? Eh? It's a good thing. It makes life easy for you, through of us. And it is the delight of God and the desire of God for you to have a good and easy life. When we teach these things, it doesn't mean that God desires you to be suffering till you die. It doesn't mean that God desires that you should not have a good life, that you should not own a good car, that you should not own a good house. That's not what God desires. But God, what God desires is that in the midst of those things that makes your life good and comfortable, will He still be number one? Follow what I'm saying. He wants to still be number one. That's his desire. He wants it to be that despite the blessings, he owns your heart. So how does God test if you, have a, if you are ready for those kind of things? What he does is that God will open a door for you and give you this iPad that is very, that makes your life easy. Right? And come back again and say, give me this iPad. The reason he's saying he should give you this iPad at times is because he has already prepared something better to give back because you can't have give the king. That's a principle in the spirit. You cannot have give God. That's why the truth is not, is not gimmicks. What you sow, eh? if you sow 1,000, God will not give you 1,000 back, for example. If you sow a land, he will give you lands because it, it's, it's, it's part of the integrity of God that he will never allow you to have given. Because if you have given him, you are now more God than him. Along with me. So he said, Jesus, give me this iPad. Because he wants to know whether despite this blessing, you can still let go. Because if you can give me the thing now, freely, if you can let this thing go, what you have told God is that he is still Lord. Despite distance. Oh, you are not with me. That's why Jesus has a name that is above every other name. Because he left his throne in heaven and came to be a mortal man to be born in a manger. Because he wanted to obey the will of the Father. That's why he was given a name that is above every other name. Because this guy had the throne. If he refused to come, nobody will beat him. But he said, in the midst of this glory I have with you in heaven, I will leave it to come to this Ticket in order just to obey you. That means even in the midst of the glory we share, you are still Lord. So if God excuse me, also not sneezing. God, are you with me? Takes this in from him and sees that he gave it with all his heart. He will not come again tomorrow and start asking him for another iPad because he knows that what uh, was that uh, your name? Chisa has conquered this thing. So you're going to see that as Abraham gave him his son, his only son, God came and said, in blessing I will bless thee. And did not demand for it again. There are certain tests God will give to you, he will not test you again. It will just be blessing upon blessing because you have proven to him that no matter the blessing. And the blessing he will use to test you is going to be something that is very difficult. Because if you can pass the test in difficulty, then you can pass the test in ease. So he will not test you in ease because if it is in ease, it will be easy for you to do. If he has 10,000 of this or 1,000 of this iPad, it is easy for him to give it back to God. And he has another 9,999. But when it is thy son, thy only son whom you love, and you can let go, then there is nothing you cannot let go. The season of ease. 
if there will try to be another test for this man, is when God sees a potential of pride, a potential of he's beginning to allow the things creep into his heart. So God will forge another test. But as long as his heart is right, there's no need for another test. But if God begins to see, God will now say, it will not be iPad again. Now, in exchange of this iPad he gave to God, God gave him cars. God gave him a lot of things. So God will come in the midst of it and look at the a lot of things and check his heart and see the thing that is like drugging him, drawing him out of God's presence and demand for that thing. The goal is not because God cannot do without that thing. God wants you, wants to conquer that lost in your heart. Because if you can let go of that thing that is drawing you away from him, he has conquered that thing in your heart. I, I hope I'm making myself clear. Yes, it's not because God needs iPad. What does God want to use your iPad? You can take a seat. When you say, yeah, am I, you have said yes to becoming a child of blessing. Let me show you something. This is is 39. Everybody, let's go. And the Lord was with who? Remember in verse chapter 37, verse 13, he said, Here am I. In chapter 39, verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph. And he was prosperous. He was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his what? Master, the Egyptian. Verse 3. Verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the, everybody read that last statement, one to go. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Because of who? Because of who? Joseph, by saying, here am I, became a channel. But he entered the house of Potiphar. The things, the life, the businesses of Potiphar took a new turn. And Potiphar had to move. They said the master saw that because of the arrival, now when this boy entered this house, 19 shift, may you be such a person. Amen. Your amen is slacking with Amen. They cannot put you out from your walk if you are such a person. Your husband will not joke with you if you are such a person. Hey, maybe you are your own married or you are married. This is how you are supposed to be. That when you meet the man, before you met him and after you met him, there will be a huge difference. He said, the Lord has blessed me because, go to Genesis chapter 30, verse 27. 37. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy eyes, tarry, uh -huh. read with me, want to go, want to go, for I have learned by what? Uh -huh. How did he learn it? So, I have learned by experience. That the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. For saying, Here am I, he became a channel. I see one or two or three of you that are here. God has positioned you to be a channel. You don't believe it. That's, that your amen is not loud. So you don't believe that you can be a channel of blessing. You know why? Because the kind of things they teach us in Nigerian churches is how to receive blessing, not to be a channel. So all our prayers is, oh Lord, locate my, let my destiny help advocate me. What of when you, can't you be a helper? That person that you're calling destiny helper is not a human being. It's not bad that destiny helper should locate you, but dissociate your mind from this being in the position of receiving from people. So when you come, they should prophesy that something want to, somebody wants to. Every time someone, can't you, oh God, my, you know they see my head. Is this not head enough? I prayed a prayer one time, which I know. I even told my wife. Some persons even made that prayer with me. One day in the church, I brought, 
I, I called for that kind of prayer and they came out. What was the prayer? I said, Oh Lord, make me a bank on earth that you can withdraw at any time from. That's a powerful prayer point. Watch my life in the next 20, 30 years, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. I made that prayer in 2018. Make me a bank on earth. Do you know what is a bank? A bank is a place where treasures are kept. Money is stored in a bank. So God has needs. God has projects on earth. So, oh God, store your resources in me. And I promise you that every time you want to withdraw, you can withdraw. Somebody here needs to make that prayer. But don't pray it carnally because you don't understand. I don't want to live a life where I will say, ah, Emmanuel has blessed me a lot. Ch uh, uh, kindness has blessed me a lot. A lot. Chisa has blessed me a lot. I want to live a life that Chisa will say, Kai, I have been blessed because of. I have been blessed because of. I have been blessed because of. Let men point on your deathbed. Let men point back at you and say it was because of you that they succeeded in life. Becoming a channel of blessing. Take away that poverty mentality. Take away that posture of, re of the Bible says it's more blessed to receive, to give than to what? Receive. If you always, let me tell you the truth. If you always, if you're always happy anytime you receive than when you give, it's a sign that you will be poor. This is the truth. If you always love it, that Jesus take, Jesus take, <laughs> hey, 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 and then, oh yeah, Jesus, please give me now. You struggle to release what was given. It's a, it's a yoke. All this one we kill ourselves in church, shouting, anointing praise are you? Oh, anointing praise are you? And our mentality is yoke of our father's as yoke of our. All those things are nonsense. Eh? Your identity in Christ, if you really know what you are, who you are in Christ, they can't do you anything. The real yoke is mental. When the Bible used the word stronghold in scripture, it said, uh, 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 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty with God to the pulling down of stronghold. It was not talking about altars. It was not talking about powers of your father's house. It was not talking about strong man. It was talking about mental strongholds. The way you think. It's the weapon of our warfare and not carnal. So what God is trying to God now they fight, he said, but they are mighty with God to the pulling down. What God wants to destroy is not Ainala, it's not Shango, it's not Amanioha. What God wants to destroy is the way you think. Because he knows that those are not the real problem. Your mind, you are not with me today. For the weapon of our warfare are not what? But they are mighty with God. So they pull it down of what? The next statement that followed is what? Casting down imaginations. So the strongholds are imaginations. The way you think, the things you imagine, how you reason, are your strongholds. That's what God wants to conquer. Have you ever asked yourself on the day of Pentecost, why was it that when the fire of God fell, it first of all burnt their head before it went to their hearts? He said, and there was a glowing tongue of fire upon their head that sat upon their head. Because God wanted these people, the destiny of Christianity lies on this one point. So I can't afford to play with it. Let me first of all work on their mind before I, I start using them. Romans chapter 12 says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, rather be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to know what is that good and perfect being of God. You will not be able to know. So, what contains with the perfect will of God for your life is your mind, your re unregenerated mind, your carnal mind. For the carnal minded man is death. Death. He said, To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritual, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I am 
become a channel of blessing. I, I know that. And I'm not, I'm not Kapala, Fradan, and Satwa. I'm not ashamed, I'm not worried. Let God bring them. I will be a channel. I will be a what? Before God will make you a bank, He will first of all test you if you can keep a cow. You know what is a cow? Before you can be a commercial bank, you can you will test you first if you can Olidara in Benin they call it Olidara. If you can keep Olidara. If you can keep a cow. Some people will do a cow and run away with people's money. That's the person that that you will run away with people's money. So if you are praying for God to take you to the realm of million billions, God will test you with the realm of thousands and hundreds. Can you release one thousand out of your five K? That's what God is looking at. If you cannot keep a leader rising bank, you do you know how much that, the, that for example, first bank, if they check their total um, their total money that is in first bank nationwide, do you know how much that is there? And the MT can run away with it. There are some commercial bank branches, they have more than five, 50 billion in their reserve. Especially in Lagos, Abuja, and places like Otakot. That's why right, there's some kind of money you want to withdraw. They will tell you that it's not in this branch, you have to go to Lagos. All those people that have those projects in billions, where do they withdraw it from? From bank. So bank keeps that kind of money. And the person is earning 100,000 salary, where he is seeing 30 billion in somebody's account, and he knows what to do. Can God trust you? I am a channel of person. Thank God you are not catching the lemma. There are certain things I say, you don't need me to tell you to say it to yourself. I am a channel. When he spoke to Moses, he said, You shall be the head and not the tail. I don't like the tail life. Even normally, when I buy, uh, what's it called? Bullet fish. It's the head that I like. I don't know what people see here in, uh, in center. There are some people here that in center they say it's the center keep it the head. Especially that big one. There are many things that are inside the head, apart from the fish itself, the flesh. You know those things, they get things with the damn. My God. Maybe <laughs> scripture says it should be the head. Not the thing. Who would like stay here? <laughs> Who likes to stay? He is middle. He's on the center. <laughs> At least we have, we have done some movement a lot. I know the one in our center. <laughs> my God, my God.
Ancient one. Ancient light. Show me things you have hidden. <laughs> For me. He said, Call upon me, I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Ancient one. Show me things. Go to Genesis 37, verse 8. The time may not be laboring like a fool. The time may not be laboring like a fool. The levels of fools. It will reach them. It will reach them. The levels of it will be said, it will be said. Show me things, show me things. <laughs> I am a channel of blessing. I am. Men will testify that by experience they have been blessed. They have noticed that they have been blessed because of me. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. Without making any statement. Just said, did not even reveal his Lord. He didn't shout, I am a Christian. Just being around Potiphar's house, things started working well. Can I ask you a question? We are there no servants in the house of Potiphar before Joseph came. But he was elevated to be ruler over them. Did you say, now by who first come? Now by who can he go? They say that man no man. For me, I say that man no God. Yes. Carry God. How come you are joining something within the sky? The business was going well until the employee made the thing on the go down. There's something wrong with you. There's something that is following you. The reverse should be the case. Since you joined the pastorate of a church, the church increases. That's why I always talk about being useful in a church, not being a bench woman. You say you are part of a place in called Salem. What is your contribution in making the place grow? What can be said by the church body or church authority? I said, these things began happening on since this person joined the church. But rather, the reverse is the case. I, the mouth, the Frank will not cease to come out from my mouth. The guy that died in 2020. Because that few time he joined us in Abutu. He revolutionized the church and the evangelism arm of the church. Pastor Michael Bosse can never forget him. Because when I joined the church in 2013 in, in the Great Bridge by Asa State, Jesus walks as me. By the grace of, of God upon my life, I've been going to revolutionize the youth alongside Pastor Children. I fire enter the church, pray a ban evangelism. Raise men in that church. African School of Theology, the church, that, the mother church of that school, cannot forget me in my time when I was in Houston. Because when I came to that place in 2014, there was no, no prayer band, no evangelism, nothing. And the church has a school that is training pastors. I said no. I took it upon myself. And used the little people that are there. We turned that street upside down, trained them. Today, some of them are pastors. Disciple the children of my rector. When I was leaving, they said, Never a man spoke like this man. All the years people have been coming to serve here. Every place I ever worked for, worked for God as a, as, as one who was serving. When I left, tears dropped from the eyes of men. I have learned by experience. That the Lord has blessed me because of you. When you say here am I, you have said yes to becoming a channel of blessing. Number 14. When you say here am I, you have said yes to false accusations, envy, and betrayals. When you say here am I, you have said yes to false accusations, envy, and betrayals. <laughs> It's part of it. 
When you say here am I, you have said yes to false accusations, envy, and and let me tell you something. <laughs> if you truly say here am I, and you pass through all these things we have said on Friday and yesterday, you see your life will become an object of envy. Especially that's why I put it after I talked about being a channel of blessing. When your life becomes a channel of blessing, it will attract envy. Yes. Yeah. It will attract false accusations. It will attract betrayers. Let me tell you, if in your work with God you have not been betrayed, you are still a baby. Meet any man who has worked with God, he's going to show you the scars all over his body. Part of those scars are scars of betrayers. See what happened to this man that said he had a man. Genesis 37, verse 8. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou what? Read with me. Now I want to go. Shall thou indeed reign over us? Uh -huh. Have to be over us. Uh -huh. Want to go? And they hated him. Yes, they were. For his what? And for his work. That's the man that said he had a man. Why did they hate him? He was a bad man. Because he was a bad boy. Because he slept with their wife. Because he stole their television. Why did they hate him? Because of his dreams <laughs> and his words. This guy spoke differently. Why will you be talking like this? Why you always do like you want to know? Because of his dreams, because of his words. Go to verse 11. Go to verse 11. After verse 11, we'll jump to 18. Let's read. Want to go? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed. Fathers don't envy. Any father that begins to envy his son is no longer a father, he's not a brethren. Brothers, you can envy brothers, but father. Cannot envy his son. He observes. After Joseph shared the revelation, the dream he had. Why would that happen? You, you mean, you mean, they envied him. The father observed. He went to make study research. His brother envied him. Child of God, you will attract envy when you say, Yeah, man. Don't think that. No, I know, I am. The envy has nothing to do with your character. You can be the nicest person. In fact, if you like sell ice cream, they will see envy. People like people who sell ice cream. Be the nicest person, most quiet person. See, you don't like trouble, they will envy you. Why? Because you said what? You just implicated yourself by saying, Jesus, if you call my name, I will answer a billion times. You are get ready for envy. Spread them envy. Why? When I attended Bible school, PJ, when I went to Benin 2014, there were people who were there in hostel and in the school and in the mother church before me. Right? So what they do is that the Wednesday service, they give prayers to uh, the hostess students to lead prayers in, and then give a charge because the Wednesday service is early in the morning, 6 a.m. So they, now I went there in September. I started September 2014. I think around ending of September or early October, it fell to my turn. They gave me Wednesday service. Because some of them, by virtue of spirituality and, and ministry and maturity, I know that I am senior to them. But by virtue of them being here before me, there's one that I was not even born again while trying to disciple. But it was so proud when I came because I've done his genome. But it was in the hostel there, he was learning where Genesis was and Exodus was. Me, I was already a pastor that had raised people. So they now gave me when is the service. The 
day I preach, this guy, oh, the way he was humble was the day he wrote, because in most of we do rotation every, um, we wake up by 5, we do prayer to 6, fellowship, then by 7 to 8, we do every day in the most of so when he rotated for my turn to preach for what's that is the guy I preached, the guy now used two hands to shake me. So but this one was in now in the church. So they now gave me this 15 minutes charge. I took 15 minutes charge. And that day the rec- I think the rector was there, the dean of student was there. When I came out, when we closed, the dean of student made a parable. And that parable, the, the summary of it is that this one don't take inside the job. <laughs> This one is not a big. And from that day, read my lips, till I graduated two years, they didn't give me Wednesday service again. They started giving me Sunday service. And because of that, some of the people who we are with us in that church, in the host there, stopped coming to that church, the mother church, and claim that God has directed them somewhere else. Why? Why would they here before Victor? Now Victor, we never see Sunday. They don't give, they are not give Victor now they give Sunday. So when they come now, they will say, let's invite um, Pastor Victor and they for the word. You see their face. Yet, they are co hostelers with me. So in other words, they are my brethren. But when I shared my dream and they heard my words, they envy me. There was one that took it to another level. He started sharing. In fact, the more they tried to do that against me, before you know, I started their band. Before you know, they gave me class rep. Like, you can't undo this guy. They gave me, I was now the president of full time. And I was causing, the more you attack me, I was revolutionizing the system. The first crusade ever organized by students in that school was pioneered by me with students' money. Different things will happen. Then one day, and some of the brethren were not close to me. One man came in our hostel prayer fellowship and said, God shared the revelation with him. And he said, the revelation was that he saw me standing in the in a place and I was naked. And my private part was like this. And all the people in full time session of our Bible school were around me clapping for me. And then he called two other hostelers that were close to me and said, they saw that they were following me as I was naked and I led them into a pit that was dark. I just said like this. Envy <laughs> manufactured the revelation. <laughs> One day we were doing mission work somewhere. You know, me and those people they called. Me and those persons he called. Through me, they have traveled to different states in this nation. And we have saved a lot of thousands of people for Christ. And so one day we were doing that mission. I said, Well, I remember that revelation where so 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 person share. I don't want to mention his name because he may watch this. <laughs> I said, Now the pit be this so. Okay. When the first a first class king in the east, first class king. That does when it's four o'clock, he doesn't step down from his from his inner chamber, even if it's the governor of any state. But he stepped down for us around five after five to six. Because he had the exploits we did, he sent for us. The first time was a court visit. And when he came that he attended to us before any other person waiting for him. He was once in a, I'm talking about first class king. And not this he's not a chief king. He has served as a house of rep. Uh, member in the 90s, you should know what I'm talking about. So, in the, the what they call South Council of South East Kings, he is the treasurer. So, why you the OB of furniture and all those kings come to him to tell you the level he is? He sent for us, came down, I gave him what the prophets, the one that our brother shared, I told him what to do, we prayed for him. So when we the honor, when we are leaving the palace, that's not the first king giving us honor. I said, now they pay to be this one and follow me and tell where that guy is saying, now they pay to me. Envy is real. Go to verse 18. 
Are you people still with me? Yes, are, you, are you offended? No. Are you learning? Yes. One thing I told God is that I will not come here to waste your time. I will always teach you His word. Whether I see five persons or I see a thousand persons, I will teach you His word. But it's left for you to do with what you learn. And when they saw him afar off, this was when he came to check for them. And before he came near unto them, they what? Conspired against him to what? Why? Because of his dreams. And at this time, remember in verse 13, he had said what? Here am I. Because he said, Here am I. They are conspiring against him. Conspiracy is part of the package in your journey with God. Men will conspire against you. Oh, you think that job like this, my sister here now, that you oh, oh will, I, will I call you my sister or my daughter? That that oh yeah, with Jesus, oh hallelujah, my name is uh, and the last is uh. as your boy is it like that. There are people that by hearing you talk like that, they will conspire against you. So so long as you have decided to work with who? You know with me. When they saw him afar, even before he came near unto, that you don't understand this scripture. That they saw him afar. They heard of his testimonies afar. They heard about his exploit afar. They heard about his dream afar. They heard about his church afar. They heard about her business afar. They heard about his new car afar. When they heard, even before he even came close to them, they don't finish the conspiracy. There are some people that are trying to gain access to you. Are you hearing me? Yes, they have already planned you before they came. Yes. With me. Oh, yeah. Joseph was not like this. Remember, his father said, Go and check on your brothers. And he carried victuals, he carried bread, he carried things to give to them. My brothers, so he too, he would have sighted them from afar. And he too, he would have seen them talking. And he would assume, Ah, they are happy for my story. They are happy for my success. They are happy with my coat of many colors. That I, you know, he went with that coat. In fact, that was their most annoying thing. That day of all day, he wear that coat that they that they that coat that was the emblem of his father's love over them. He was going to meet them even before he came near. They don't step to how they want to finish up. Beware. 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 Verse 19. And they said one to another, Behold, this word, dream and comment. It's still that dream that's their problem. One time I wasn't believing, and God was trying to do small things with us, little things with us. Some people started sending messages and said, Me and they do like saying, I mean, no pass. I mean, they do like saying, I mean, righteous pass. I don't do anything. I mean, fellow pastors. And they were not conspiring against me, and God revealed it to me. And I withdrew for a while. I went to pray. They wanted to penetrate to one of the persons close. I said, God just showed me the revelation. What is the plan? The plan, what's the reason? That I do they do that I say I mean no pass? How are they do that I say I mean no pass? I do they do that I say I mean right How am I how do I behave like that? I just focus on the flock God has brought to me. You you have your own flock, but before they even came near, they came near, they are conspired. And the problem is that he was a dreamer. Let me tell somebody here, keep dreaming. Did you hear what I said? Yes, keep being a dreamer. It will come to pass. Yes, Even if they conspire. Verse 20. Verse 20. My God. Come now, therefore, and let us what? Slay him. And cast him into some what? And we will say, some evil beasts have devoured him. We shall see what will become of his. This was what they conspired. They settled how 
and they even plan a lie, they will lie when he finally dies. But do you know the good news? Akai Ujawa had made a big cover moon. Despite the plan, and conclude, they even saw how he would die, and how they would spread the news of his death. Joseph never died. Because of his dreams. Because of his dreams. Look at you, you say you are great. When they tell you that, when they call you, you are prophesied greatness on you. Eh? Look at me. When they prophesy greatness on you, uh, you are great. I'm seeing greatness. You just think it's going to be, oh my God, life, life is, my dear, for being great, there are people that are angry for that. Whether you do them or not, that is life. Why are you in school? I trust him in my friend. I trust him. No, it's my close friend. It's my closest. It's my close friend. Where do you think they will get you from? Where do you think they will get you from? Where do you think they will get you from? When they check the results, you're coming out on top. You are speaking good English. You are not doing boyfriend. You are not doing girlfriend. You are preaching Christ. Ah! He said, they conspired to this. So when we talk about conspiracy, those of you that are young, your mind is thinking of your parents that not be you that they talk about. See you. Joseph was 17 years when these things were happening. It's not that Joseph had married, he had not bought a car. He, had, he was 17, he was still a teenager, and they were planning to cut his life short as a teenager. So, when you know, say, No, it's not me, it's my daddy or my mommy. No, this is my best friend. Best friend that you are not seeing in the spirit, yes. who you do not know that is an agent sent. They want to slay you. Go to verse 26. Don't get me fooled. Don't get me sorry. All the wonder, glory And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his what? So this guy, Judah, now said, We don't go gain anything if we just kill him and hide his blood. So he wanted to monetize this thing. He said, if we just kill him like that, there will money will not enter our pocket. Eh? It will be a waste. Profit. Who then they talk about? It's not, they are not talking about rice. They are not talking about beans here. They are not considering the profit of banana. They are using human beings to see how they can make profit with human beings. Verse 27. Come and let us what? Send him to the Ishmaelites. Let not our hand be upon him, for he is our what? Brother, and our flesh, and his brethren we are content. Uh -huh. 28. Then there passed by Midian and merchant men, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites. For how many pieces of silver? 20 pieces of silver. Do you notice that this thing is familiar? Yes, sir. Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver. Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver. Samson was sold for 120 pieces of silver. Is that one page or one fifth? Can you see that Samson, Joseph, Jesus, we are men who said, Here am I. And because they said, Here am I, they conspired. The one that betrayed Jesus was the one that did the spread in the same court with him. Because said here am I. Are you a great person here? Are you a great man here? Are you a great boy? Are you a potential greatness? Beware of Judas. You can't come late to the ministry. The betrayer does not come from afar. It comes from the brethren. This is why I've decided to live a kind of life. The more I grow in this ministry, the more I'm tightening my secrets and tightening my door of access. Because betrayer will come from what? It's from the brethren to come. They envy him. 
They envied him. Hey, Kasato Anna, let me show you something. Give me Matthew 26, verse 15. After that, we'll go to Acts 13, 45. Okay. And said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for what? 30 pieces of. Who did they covenant with there? Judas. Judas. A disciple of Jesus left the camp and went to the enemy and said, How much you will give me? I will give this guy. I will deliver him to you. And scripture selected the word very well. He said they com he didn't say agreed, he said they companented. Blood entered. Companented. Many of you here they have companented, you're not aware. You see, it's if your marriage is becoming a picture, a perfect picture of what a kingdom marriage should look like, get ready for attacks. Because there are people who are not enjoying that. Yes. And they want to destroy your own testimony. So that all of us, there's a preach message that we preach one day titled, I sat where they sat. I will preach it one day. It is in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel said, I sat where they sat until the Spirit lifted me up. When I will bring the revelation behind that, you know. As long as we are sitting together, going through the same things, no wahala. But the moment you will start becoming a channel of blessing, they will contend how to bring you power. As long as you are still wearing one shoe, one shirt, eh? You are not with me. As long as your crochet, your 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 conference is, is just attracting fifteen percent.
You see some people's faces and I'm like, what is the problem now? Some predicted that it will not last two months. But now it has not just lasted two months, it has two campuses. We have done two graduations. Let's see another graduation. They never expect that. And we don't go down again. We now have our own town. And the part of the church, what do they know? Is that the part of the church is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. follow me, you will be crushed. If I follow you, you will be dashed in pieces. I carry the rock of offense. Don't make me fall. Don't make me sorry. I want only one bed. No be Mark 15, 10. Mark 15, 10. Don't make me fall. Don't make me sorry. Some of those people that did those things, they are not trying to be friends with me again. You know, they walk. Eh? Forgiveness granted, access denied. I'm not holding grudge against them. One of them saw me and said, I'm preparing a mega program next day for you to come. A mega program. I said, Okay, but today, why are you inviting me? What if I had failed? What if I'm even listening to you and didn't do that school? Do you know that this last graduation that you people came? Eh? Do you know that some people came from to observe? I mean, some people know me from where all of us went to. They actually came to observe. If you were there, you some of you you are gone. You had gone. They came in. And by the time you left, the crowd was more. Outside, that is minister everywhere full. So when they were entered, when they came, there was no seat for them. So they were now outside, and rain was falling, and they are now looking for chairs that were rented to try to fix the space for them. When they entered, I knew we are there to see the whole thing. You could see how they were looking around and doing it like this. So this boy they succeed. What a graduation. Now, Victor, they took a graduation. They just said their head like this. As I'm talking to them, they did not last up to 20 minutes there. They did not give. Up. Because I raised money. They did not give. They just did like this. Stay for some time. I'll serve the impartation that I gave to the student and left one time. And then, one, somebody I meet, one that is, is close, I will talk to him. He said, They come up and observe you. <laughs> I said, Maybe they come. This one of them that came to observe and they saw me and we were talking. He said, How do you think they do your own ministry? I said, Nah, God, no. He said, Nah, lie. He said, Where do you think they get your own inspiration? I said, Nah, where you also think they get? Now we'll get the same father in the Lord. He said, Nah, lie in the talk. He said, Jordan, I come online, I come to see your video when they preach. The kind of knowledge, where you get and back. He never tell me. He said, I the plan to go for that part. <laughs> to go spend time. <laughs> he never tell me. That, because the truth is that I am not the best, but I'm sent of God. If some of these persons talk and I talk, he will know the difference. Let's talk scriptures. When I preach in that my father in the law school last year when he invited me. After I finished preaching, I was preaching. One of them told me, So, oh boy, you don't, you're left to hire you. Did they preach? Prove they right. Prove they not right. When I was preaching, he was right. Then one would, he took me to his office and served me tea, hot tea. That, it was all night. So he said, He said, you will take tea and we will take more time. I said, Nothing. He said, You must take something to take tea. The one we are talking, he now said, the kind things will come out for your mouth this night. <laughs> he said, even people will not follow me for years, no, no. <laughs> and people are getting 
he was getting testimonies after the program. Testimonies, he called me and told me, Sir, what's the city they come, come in the testifier of that meeting? And there are some people that were upset when I came out with him from the office during that program. When he, you know, he said I should wait for him so that two of us were entered together. But why in he? All of us go to school at the same time. Look at Mark chapter 15. Are you people still with me or you are yes, yes. Are you tired? No. no. Mark chapter 15, verse 10. He said, For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him because of what? Amen. This was Pilate. Pilate knew that the chief priest brought Jesus. Not because Jesus did anything, but because of what? Amen. My dear, they will sell you. They will attempt to sell you. That's why you must pray your game very well. When you see elements of envy cut that relationship. Mm-hmm. Eh? You see as you do now, of course they play keyboard. Just by tomorrow have up to 50 million in your account and have one good car. You will discover what I'm talking about. You see the people that ask there are people that you are running things with. As long as we are all the same, no one. I mean, told you of somebody. There are some people that are even helping you financially. Look at me. Eh? They like the fact that you are the one that is down and they, and they are up, and you are always coming to them. Yes, sir. They will never help you to to stand. They just want you to be at that posture of my rent gone, my my business. I need to boost them. My then they will complain and say, well, I have things on. Take the day you just attempt to break out, like you are succeeding without their support. Uh-huh. Fight so. this girl never come back me money for the last one year. How and I enter her shop everywhere. How is she doing it? This girl that normally come and beg me now, he's trying to make this come. How they, they deliver Jesus for arrest, crucify him, not because he sinned. Because of what? You see this journey where you want to God will make you a channel of blessing. But get ready for him to get ready for it. You begin to hear calls like David. Just uh Augustina. Stay like this. Ah, you don't say why I call uh, kindness. My God, kindness, kindness now my friend for secondary school, or kindness now my friend for ministry, or kindness now my business friend that time. And kindness on the scene in post for Facebook. As they ask for kindness, as kindness speak, the first thing they attack is they say, Hello, kindness. Uh, hey, hey, the Almighty don't find any call. At the same, you know, God, at the same, since we, God don't bless you, then they call person again now. And he say, uh, you don't forget me now. You don't forget me. You don't forget me. No wahala. You don't forget me. He said, no, 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 forget you. Uh, as as the marry now, we never marry now. They say people will marry, then they come people will never marry. When you start hearing such statements, it's from the standpoint of envy. Yeah, right, sir. Yes, sir. And by the way, I was spending discussing something with Mama. I was correcting somebody something early last week. I said, listen. You see this mentality of attack when somebody calls you, your friend or somebody who you have not spoken with longer, when they call you or you call, the first thing they attack the attacker, you don't forget me now. That's a wrong mentality. That's a local mentality. That, that's why you are poor. That they call and enter your phone, it's a sign that you didn't forget you. Yes. There are things that cannot happen like it was in 2099. Uh, or 1999. That I was telling one, I called somebody. When she, because every time I call her, she will attack me. You don't forget me. Uh, as long you don't be a person now, you don't leave us. You don't leave other cops. You don't leave us. Me, so I called her and I, I said, I say, you, you don't forget me. You don't be really everywhere too. He said, which way? No, God, I'm not you. As, at the end of the talk, I now say, see, I don't forget you. The proofs I don't forget you, I'm in this call. You say I come beneath, I don't come see, I don't come your side as usual those days. Say, and even your children, you were saying, the children say, Pastor Victor, don't forget them now, don't go high, high, high. I said, now you, they make them think like that. 
I said, do you know the last time I came to Benin, which was that feast of eagles? That as we landed, ah, we, I never even realized that to eat straight to the program. I was telling her, straight to the program. After the program, straight to the hotel in the night. The next morning, straight to my father in the Lord's church for his program. I carried my wife to went there. After that one, straight to the uh, pray for uh, 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 the baby of our member that gave birth. Believe me, but from that place straight to the hotel, from the hotel straight to the program, they too. As I did in the night, went to the hotel. The next morning is graduation ceremony. Graduation started by 10, T around 5. And I'm the rector of the event. I went down on the to make sure everything is in order before I went to the hotel and bathed and came back. Went to the hotel that night, Saturday. Sunday morning, went to church at Bini Branch, preached there. Sunday afternoon, I came to the hotel, changed, went straight to my, my father, the Lord was doing the 16th anniversary. Went to that place. Tonight, from there, I went to the hotel. Monday morning, straight. He called me and said he wanted to give me something. He didn't see me. I went to his office, collected the gift he gave me. Straight to the park, straight to the out. I told her, I said, because she was like, I think you when you come you know, you know the doctor say you don't see other people. I said, I don't see anybody. I said to her, I said, no, it's not like 2015. When me and so so and so person who will come your house, who will eat, who will cheese. Growth has happened. Yeah. You, you know what I know with me. Yeah, yeah, growth has what? I said, this social person is in so 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 state. Me and not in Portaco. The other person is in so 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 place. We need to see every time. The good, of, the good thing is that whenever we see, we will catch up. Any day I stay like this, call you. Maybe after two months, three months, you will, will catch up, will talk, will laugh. How you doing? How you feel? That don't somebody just call you, you attack the person. You don't forget me because you don't get car now. Because you don't. Some of you have that mentality. Kill it. What happens to her? My guy, how far? You don't think. Stay your own thinking and they don't forget you. They don't forget you. They don't forget you. Are you why do you feel that somebody's progress is the reason why you're not progressing? Eh? You always feel like that. Some people they will say they will not even communicate, they will just leave step like Chisa is doing well now. Me, I'm not doing well. And Chisa was my friend, or Chisa was my classmate. I will not communicate with him. Before you know, envy will begin to, I will begin to feel that he is succeeding. That's why I'm not succeeding. Or, carry me and carry What kind of mentality is that? Are you distracted or you're with me? Ah, 
Frack. As I don't do my business with my father in the law. Frack. I don't even go. But sometimes here you call home can be the place where they will take your coat of many colors and give you to the Ishmaelites. You're not get. So now when I go there, some people are saying, ah, ah, come now. They say, ah, what's no? They are part of the person doing face like this one I said, by this. Try to get to me now. I think he's still commenting my post on Facebook that will make us friends. You are a traitor. And you have been a traitor. You are just you just don't know how I've been succeeding despite your traitorship. So you want to come close again to find a way. You get some people wait, no need to know your condition. If they have anything at the top, yes, yeah. they don't need to know your what. They feel they are succeeding and they begin to miscalculate sometimes, like you are now, stand up. You are well dressed. Are you hearing me? So when they see your post on Facebook, they calculate that this guy is on money. But you, you know that he's Gary you drank. You know how you are managing your life. But the great thing about you is so far that I told you that some people that think that I have jeep in this or that part. And I'm living in an estate. I told you that, right? Let them continue to have that. No. And now, they will, as long as they are treating you like that, they will not seek to come close to you. The reason is to know whether that thing they are actually thinking is true. So when you do not know and you give them access, they not see you drink at it. They not see you, you're managing. They not see you, you're telling your landlord to give you some time. They will come go back and say, no be as if you view, no be as we think. And they will use that against you again. So if people think that you are enjoying, let them don't be explaining, you know what that they go through, you know what that how many you be explained. See that I told you how Mama's birthday was today. The next day somebody sent her a message of attack. <laughs> From within the circle in beneath. <laughs> what did they just as you saw her picture and she was so fun? <laughs> sent her a very useless voice note. If I play that voice note, you want to slap that person if you see the person. Thank you, Jesus. Very useless voice note. Voice note. And using Emmanuel, we see as, as the two, as the link. That mama is shining. And how does mama feel? <laughs> that mama does not care whether Emmanuel is eating or not. Mama, the power is the only shine. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you did here, you did just as him. I even feel that they stay for church. You don't get conscience. Hey, hey. Is that anointing? Yeah. What did the lady do? What, what, what is her confess? Just celebrate them day. And I wrote them an episode. <laughs> he said, after they post, we are you, they eat. We are you, and father, they enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, who don't see posts on food since? <laughs> Those of you that view my, you know, the last time we posted when we were eating was our honeymoon. <laughs> my God. <laughs> Meanwhile, the person you were talking about was she in the trenches before she got married. Just birthday post. Has been to church once in the last nine months 
or one EFF. Once or twice. See, now in the nightmare, people they leave church for belief. That's now mom will be the reason. Because she will do better books. Mama the mama the mama. Who starts start to mama the mama? Did we not come up before it starts to the mama the mama and the reason? Because she knew they do give away. But she was indirectly talking to me actually, not her. But she, because she could not send me that voice note, she saw mama as a weak link to attack. Say, I did talk to you because of the woman too. I don't say papa will hear this and papa will best. But man talk my mind. So it's papa you actually want to know. We don't talk business. More talk woman to woman. My God. It's not your fault indeed. Because you have WhatsApp and you have no You have data. I told the pastor, I said, remember in your light again. In your, in your, if you, you will see the right side of me. So if, if I want to give now, I should post it that I so if I give this now, I should announce it. The reason for all those things is not because of anything, it's because of what? And let me show you what God advises us to do when people start attacking us. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Verse 12. Humble me, humble me, Sabe. Omo Olu Wambe, Lobi Ake. He who dwells in the midst of that terrible heat, shine forth. He who dwells in the midst of that terrible heat. Start persecuting you when they start talking about you because of small, small shine when they see rejoicing in what oh. keep rejoicing, patient in what tribulation, continuing instant in what yeah. don't stop, don't stop because of what they say, just continue to hope. They conspire against you, hope they are envying you, hope be patient, even if that's not what they're doing against you. Verse 13, verse 13. Distributing to the necessity of the world, giving to what? Don't stop to be hospitable. Don't stop giving. That's why that they will accuse you that you're not giving. They accuse you that you're not. Don't keep doing what I did. That's scriptures. Go ahead. Verse 14. Bless them which what? Uh -huh. And cost not. This person I didn't cost her. I said, if you, if you want me to cost you, Try it again. If I show you my reply, fear no left and write anything. Because person will be lying, also be lying. But because of these scriptures, I did not cause. He said, cause not. Uh -huh. Verse 15. Rejoice with them that what? And weep with them that what? Uh -huh. Go ahead. Be of the same mind, one toward. Uh -huh. Mind not high things. All those snake queen, all those girls that all their mind is high, 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 high. Scripture said, don't put your mind on high things. Because when you put your mind on high things, that's when you begin to persecute people and think they are the reason why you are not succeeding. It's because if, if your shoe that you can buy is the two five, can buy it. If you see somebody's one that is ten five, leave the best. That's the level of the person. Yes. Don't mind high things. But condescend to men of what? Low estate. Uh -huh. That's don't, don't, this one means don't be segregated. This one not in my class. This one not my class. So also accommodate people of low estate. Uh -huh. Be not wise in your own conceit. Verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. But rather do what? Provide things honest in the sight of all. They are trying to give you evil. Don't do evil back. Keep doing good. And when you're doing good, do it with honesty. Don't do it for showmanship. Do it with all honesty. Uh -huh. Verse 18. 
if it be possible, as much as it lies in you, live peaceably with what? Do you know why I said if it is possible? Because it may not be possible to live peaceably with all men. He said, but as much as it's in your hand, if it is in your hand, live peaceably with them. But there are some matters that are not in your, maybe that's beyond your control. That they give you malice. You come home in the night, they, they keep you malice. They say they will not open the door. It's not in your power. They don't want peace. But go ahead, verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not your what? Self. Remember what we are talking about. When they begin to conspire against you, when they begin to envy you, when they begin to betray you, don't avenge yourself. Don't try to fight. Don't try to reply. That's why I told Mama that person will not reply. It's me that will reply. Because she's not even worth your. She's not worth it. Let me warn her. But now me, she talk to me. But rather give place unto what? God. See the meaning of that. For it is written in, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, say it. Don't avenge for yourself. When, when they envy you, persecute you, conspire, don't go and say, I want to conspire back. No. He said, Give place for us. Give place for us. Allow God to fight. Allow the anger of God to defend you. The wrath of God to avenge. Uh -huh. Verse 20. Therefore, see what you will do when they conspire against you. Like Joseph, when his brothers finally came to meet him in Egypt, what did he do to them? He gave them what? So see what he followed here. Therefore, if that enemy hunger, do what? If he test, do what? Uh -huh. For he so do you, that shall he the go of what? Of what is what? You don't fight your enemy by shouting enemy that. You fight the enemy by giving to him. Yes. When you give to him, you have set him up. It's just like you want to kill rats in your house. Feed the rats yes. for food poison. Yes. So, he said, if your enemy hunger, give him food. If he's thirsty, give him drink. Don't give him money. Don't give him money. But give him food. Give him drink. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, you know why? It is wisdom not to give him money. They can use money, but they cannot use food. Yes. And if you give them food, when hunger beat them? <laughs> and that's why he even said something. Follow scriptures, follow me. Are you agree with me? He said, if thy hunger. He didn't say it must. He said, if Order. If it comes to you, if it does not come to you, don't, don't, don't worry yourself. But if the others, you know, there are some enemies that pretend that they are well, and let them keep pretending. But if you hunger, feed him. If you is, if he is thirsty, my drink, give him drink. He said you are you are giving him judgment. Do you know what is called of fire on the head of somebody? It's not by fighting, it's not by shouting, it's not by saying, my enemy, die. my enemy. See how you deal with the enemy. Verse 21. Be not overcome of what? Evil. But overcome what? Evil with good. Don't allow evil somebody to make you evil. That's what it means. Yes, sir. But overcome, how do you fight against evil? With good. When they talk bad about you, don't talk bad back. Do good. Why? Romans 8 28. See why? Romans 8 28. Romans 8 28. See why? Am I teaching here? Yes, sir. Let's read together. See why you should not worry yourself. Why? I want to go and we know. Uh huh. Uh huh. To them that what? Uh huh. To them who are. According to what? What did you answer here am I to? Is it not the call of God? When you answer his call and you begin to see all those things, just know that all things work together for good to them that have said here am I. Just know. Just what? Just know. The things that they did to Joseph. We are the land Joseph. Eh? 
that the plot against him was actually the the, the tool to his to, to pathway to the fulfillment of the prophecy over his life. So don't worry. Did you lose your job because somebody lied? Don't worry. In your quest of following God, have you is, have you lost something? Or are you going to have people? Sometimes it can even be from your own husband or your wife. They can even because at that season they will not believe you. That's now wondering. Yes, don't be that we are there that day. I talk about wondering the thing. The seasons of wondering, they can even question your decisions. But know that all things work together. For good to them that what? To them that what? Number 15. You have, when you say yeah, am I, you have said yes to a life of strict righteousness. Genesis chapter 37, verse 1 to 8. And 39, verse 1 to 9. You have said yes to a life of strict righteousness. And Jacob dwelt in the land of where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. Uh -huh. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the land was with the sons of Biha and with the sons of Zippah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their what? Evil. So Joseph did not join them. That's why they hated him. If you want to stay here, am I? You should just know that you are get. You should be ready for a life of strict righteousness. You cannot be living an unrighteous life and say you are saying here. Yeah, in Genesis 39, you discover we have Joseph, Potiphar's wife, offered her body to him. What did he do? He said, How can I do this wickedness against God? He refused. Can you be. I, everybody look at me now. Look at me now. Are you willing to go to prison because of righteousness? Are you willing to go to prison because of righteousness? Joseph was willing to resist sin, even unto prison, even unto imprisonment, instead of him to offend God. The problem with the kind of faith we practice these days is that it is, it is so weak that it cannot withstand pressure. When you, they pressurize you to sin, you yield. When they pressurize you to compromise, you yield. But the truth is that when you say, here am I, you have said yes to a life of strict righteousness. Even if it means prison, I won't yield to sin. Even if it means losing my job, I will. Why are you falsifying figures to maintain your job? Why are you living a lie? Say, but if I don't do it, they will relieve me of my job. Number 16. When you say here am I, you have said yes to the opposing of established falsehood in the corridors of what? Power. When you say here am I, you have said yes to the opposing of established falsehood in the corridors of of power. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 to 19. You will see the story of Samuel being called of God there. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 to 19. I said you have said yes to what? Eh? To the opposing of what? Established falsehood in the corridors of what? Everybody see, and they tried somewhere, ministered unto the Lord before Ella. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Verse 2. And it came to pass at the time when Eli was laid down in his face, and his eyes began to wax thin, that he could not see. Verse 3. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord. We had the ark of God was. And Samuel was laid down to sleep. The story, eh? Look up, look up, look at him. Remember the analysis from verse 1. The lamp of God has gone out. There was no open vision in those days. Eh? The church of God was in a dark age as at that time. Yet there were leaders, so Eli was the leader. 
And Eli had two sons. Eli had what? What are their names? Hopefully, okay. and the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel answered, Here am I. Samuel did not know that this here am I answer was a yes to the opposite, opposing of established falsehood. Let me show you. Next verse. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I. Am I. For thou callest me. And he said, I caught not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. Go to verse, verse 8. Verse 8. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli. Go to verse 10. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times. Samuel, Samuel. Now, before we go further, do you know why God was calling Samuel? Samuel was running to Eli. Do you know why? I've taught you before. It's because God called Samuel with the voice of Eli. Look up, look up, listen. God called Samuel with the voice of who? Eli. That's it. So Samuel thought it was Eli. So, but when it happened three times, Eli now used his experience to know that it was God. He said, when next the voice calls again, say, speak for thy servant. Yeah, it. it happens to today. Some of you, God, if you are a member of Salem, eh? if you are a child of Salem, God will use me, my voice and my face to appear to you and to speak to you. Yeah. How many of you have seen me in your dream before? Let me see your hand. It will happen. When you see me in the dream, it's not me. It is God speaking through the voice of Ella. Because God will use the spiritual authority in your spiritual atmosphere to speak to you. He will pass through men to men. Sometimes you can hear an instruction and it will come with a voice, my voice, this is my physical voice. It's God trying to use the authority over your life. It has happened to one lady. I've told you before. Right? She met her old time lover. She was not married now. But the guy that actually was her first love. And she did a lot of things. She even lost her virginity to him. She even stole from her mom to give to the boy. You know that kind of teenage madness. <laughs> but they the didn't marry. The guy left. So years later, she became adult and got married. So after many years, she now met that guy again. And the guy now was like, where have you been? I've been looking for you. Long story short, it, her sister actually did that matchmaking because the current man she is married to, the marriage is having some shaking. Eh? She does not, according, she does not love the man like she loved that first love. So now her sister now went to set the thing up and told her that they want to go for a meeting. Listen, you know, the meeting was in a hotel where that guy is. But the sister hid it from her sister. Not to know. So when she carried her to the place, or reaching the place, opened the door, lo and behold, her so called first love. The sister Waka Komot, let them talk. One thing led to another, one thing led to another, one thing led to another. And emotion started flying. And they wanted to become intimate. Amen. She said at the peak of the thing, she heard my voice audibly. Meanwhile, I know they there. She said she heard my voice audibly calling her name and saying, Don't do it. Don't and started telling, reminding her what will happen if she does, does this thing. Meanwhile, the guy at the peak of it though, at least some clothes don't come out. That's what I'm talking about. She stops, she resisted the guy. Like, Why? Let's run away. Let's run to so 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 place. We will marry. Who we'll said? She says she cannot. By hearing my voice, but the truth is, it was not me. It was somewhere hearing the voice of God in the tone, format of a lie. So I said, at the year pastor voice now. It's not me. I'm in my house eating up and soup that my wife cooked. 
And it's also because I intercede for the people that are under. So when I intercede, God will use. Do you understand? Yes, sir. That's why you need to have a figure. God can use a figure to fight for you in the dream. That's, I've seen people that they were trying to attack, and then all of a sudden, they will say they saw their father, the Lord, that came to defend them. It was not me. But because I, they are connected, are you with me? So Samuel said, here am I. But see what he was saying, here am I too. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered and spoke. And said, speak for what? Verse 11, yes. And the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it is shall tingle. In that day I will perform against who? Uh -huh. All the things which I have spoken concerning his word. When I begin, I will also was verse 13. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth. Because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not. Verse 14. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice, not offering. For what? This one was too much. God said, Living sacrifice and offering will be cancelled this limit. Go ahead. And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared. Take note of that word. Fear. To do what? Don't forget what I'm saying. When he answered the other man, he didn't know he was saying yes to opposing the established household. The house of Eli was the authority of the day. The house of Eli was the powerhouse of the day. And now God is calling this small boy to preach a message to counter that falsehood. Are they still with me at all? Yes, sir. Before someone feared, someone grew under Eli. Now God is sending him to scatter, to go and tell Eli that he will kill him and judge his house. That is confronting established falsehood in the corridors of power. Let me tell you, this one happens to be preach, uh, uh, to preachers. For example, you see me, I know my assignment in Port Harcourt, and I know that if we continue this assignment, it will attack the corridors of power. You don't know. I'm, when I'm talking about corridors of power, I'm not even talking about politics. I'm talking about the church. There are certain people who have established their ministry in this town and they establish it in falsehood. They establish it with the wrong message. They establish it with, with, with compromise. And now a young man at Roma Hono is crying righteousness. And God blesses his cry and is gaining visibility. You know what it means? They will come for you. This is why someone fear. How won't they confront a lie? The organ of this territory. But when you say the other man, you say yes to it. You say yes to it and no to the fear of man. When you say the other man, it may not be ministry, it can be business. It can be fraud. You may know a fraud in the business world where you are operating that people you decide to do your own different thing. That difference that you are trying to make is attacking the system. You don't understand. Yes, sir. You will either choose to join them and do the fraud or attack what they are doing. Someone fear to show a lie. <laughs> Verse 16. Let's see what happens. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, Samuel, my son. And he answered what? Yeah. He was implicating himself in more. <laughs> See, what, how many years am I as this guy said in this one chapter? <laughs> Let it not be that after this conference now, some of you will refuse to answer here am I. Victory. Will you say here am I? <laughs> Yes, 17. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord has said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. 
God do so to thee, and more also, if thou hide anything from me of all the things that he said unto thee. Verse 18. And Samuel told him what? Every week. And he nothing from him. And look at what Eli said. That's to tell you that it's an established household. This will not make money for that thing. He said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth good. What seemeth him good. Say, Consign God. Anything we want to make do. That's what a man of God was saying. Because a younger prophet is crying righteousness. It's not a few to repent. He said, Anything we want to make do. You don't see God finish. They take this down. They are in this nation. And do you know how they quench young Samuels? People are not with me again. Do you know how they quench young Samuels? Eh? They will invite the young Samuels to, in the name of fatherhood, and cover them. The young Samuels are God sent to this generation to cry and now run into this established ministries, in quotes, for validation. So you, you will not be able to say it as God said you should say it. How can you hear from? Beware of old prophets. You know that old prophet that points to that young prophet in first Kings 13? Old prophets. Old prophets. Old prophet is not only ministry. Whatever God has called you, that's what I'm talking about. Any area God has called you to, there are people who are there who are making it too falsehood. If you come to challenge them, eh, they will stand against you. But when you say there are man, you say yes to challenging them. It's a call. It is a what? It's a call. You must know that it's a call. I will also add that. Someone never challenged her life until God told him to. Verse 19, the last. Eh? See how God honored this guy. He said, and Samuel what? Grew. Uh -huh. And the Lord was with him. And did let none of his words. You want to come to this level. Do you know the meaning of that? Anything Samuel thought of. God no alarm drop for God. It come to pass. Even when no be God inspired, if someone say when we fall, God or not. Why? For him to be put to confront this. That's the way he been prayed up. Because of the falsehood and the sin that was going on. The Lord was with him. And he grew. Somebody here you will grow. This is my confidence. You see, when I teach like this, I teach like all of you are pastors. This is my confidence. I know what will happen in this town when our home begins to rise. But what will happen is that the more they seek to undo what we are doing, somewhere grew. And the Lord was with him. Finally, when you say here a man, you have said yes to endless generational blessings. Genesis 22, verse 1. When you say, Dear man, you have said what? Yes. yes. To what? Endless generational blessings. So, when you are going through hardship, when you are going through mockery, when you are going through trials because of the call of God, always remember that there are generational blessings that are with you. It's not going to be mockery forever. You see, are you hearing me? It's not always going to be what? Okay. See it now. Let's read. One to go. This is the last scripture. And I want to go. And get to pass. After these things that God did tempt Abraham. I told you that word tempt is test. Right? And said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here am I. Abraham said, Here am I. Every of them just say, Here am I, here am I. So, me too, I say, Here am I. Because I want generational blessings. You know what are generational blessings? Generational blessings are blessings that when you, when you die, your children will enjoy from it. Your grandchildren will enjoy from it. Your great grandchildren. See this part, I'm trying to show you today. It will benefit your children, children, children. Even unto the 10th generation. 
for those that follow the path of evil, they will also pass evil to their generation. The sins of the fathers, the children are suffering from it. Why not you choose this path? Verse 2. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of what? Moriah. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. upon the what? Upon all the what? Which I will tell thee. John 2, verse 11. Let's see what happened. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, What? Yeah. This guy is totally surrendered to God. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look at what God told him. For doing that thing, verse 12. He said, And he said, Lay not thy hand upon thy land, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God. Oh. Wow. So this one. God is speaking like a man. He said, Anna, I know. For you to do this in Anna. All this why you the talk say, God, you know me. God, you know me. You are not with me again. Look at me. God, you know my heart. God said, I will test it. God this God, you know my heart. God said, I don't know your heart until I test you. As Abraham passed the test, he said, For it's now I know that you fear God. Seeing that thou hast not withheld what? Thy son. Eh? Uh -huh. Thy only son from me. That you could not withhold your only son. Next verse. And looked and behold, behind thee a ram caught in a ticket by his son. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a bond offering in the stead of what? Next verse. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Eh? That's the over tired that you say, the over tired, the over that's where that name came out from. The over tired, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven, the what? The uh -huh. This time around, what did he say to him? And said, By my soul. Everybody read with me out loud, want to go. And said, By myself. I have sworn, say it. I thank God, don't they swear? <laughs> I have sworn, said the Lord. Go ahead. For so because thou has done this thing and has not withheld thy son, thy only son, uh -huh, that in what? Blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thee, thy seed as the stars of the heaven. And as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy word see shall possess the gate of his enemies. See how the children that will come later, they will be enjoying not knowing that it was the price of Abraham. Today, now you can't try Israel. No matter what you do against Israel, you can't quench it. Very small nation, but very powerful. Hamas went to try them, see what is happening to them. You can and that is not because they are too good. It's not because they know how to do nuclear weapon. The reason is because ever this thing that God told him now. Do you know how many children Abraham died more than four thousand years ago? Yet his prize, the children are still benefiting from. I choose this part. I choose the part of generational blessing. That even when I'm gone, my children, my children, children. They will be benefiting from my sacrifices. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. So I rather pay the price. I rather say here am I, because I know I'm not wasting time. I say I'm not wasting time. Most people come church today. I mean, you're supposed to be bitter with me. Ah. I say I'm not wasting time. I'm not wasting my time in the church. My sacrifice. My sacrifice, my services, <coughs> the difficult instructions I obey, I'm not wasting time. I am building a legacy for my children. 
and children's children, and children's children's children, up to generations of gold and talk to God. Open your mouth and talk to God. And tell him that you are willing to say here and now. Oh my God, can I hear prayers here? Can I hear prayers here? Say, Lord, I'm willing to say here and now. I'm willing to face the mockery. I'm willing to face the shame. I'm willing to face the shame. Because I know. Because I know. Generational blessings. Generational blessings. I can't be stored. I can't be 